The Run With Manny Wilson podcast is brought to you by Fifth Investments. Investing is the easiest way to double your money, especially when you do it right. Most of us need help with getting started, right? I'm telling you right now, Fifth Investments is the easiest way to take your first step. You can sign up for the daily trading journal, weekly newsletter, including trade ideas, market analysis, news, and information on navigating the stock market. They got you covered with long-term, short-term, options trading, and more. So go to fifthinvestments.com and use the promo code The Run for $20 off of your premier membership, or just sign up for free. Trade the stock market and perfect a skill that's going to last you a lifetime. The information is not trading or investment advice. The newsletter is only a personal blog that is being offered publicly for general information purposes only. The Warriors weaknesses when they gave up easy buckets and they weren't getting to their assignments in time. The Kings stepped up and they played a great game of basketball. So before you start talking trash about, oh, the Warriors should easily be beating this team or when they have a good game, they'll be beating this team. You have to first acknowledge how great of a team the Sacramento Kings are. And if you don't know by now, damn Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers. And headphones. Let's get into it. Hey, we got a great episode for you today, man. April 18th, 2023. Let's do it. The playoffs is here. It's been a lot going on, especially if you watched that Warriors and Kings game last night. So we touching all over the playoffs, all the games that's happened in the playoffs. Suns, Clippers, uh, probably not so much Philly in the Brooklyn Nets, but Hawks, Celtics, Knicks, Knicks Cavs. Uh, Clippers, Suns, I already said that, uh, but Lakers, Grizzlies, Bucks, Heat, all of these teams that's playing right now, we're not going to cover them all because we know some of them is obvious right now. Like, there's no point for me to even talk about some of the teams we know are like 100% going to win that series right now. Like Philly and, and Brooklyn, I'm sorry, you know, hey, you know how it goes right now. The way Embiid and the 76ers are looking, you, you, you know the results. Let's, let's be honest about it. Some people may say the same exact thing about the Warriors, though, because based on these first two games that we've seen so far, it's looking like we might know the results. And I'm, I'm not one to say the Kings is going to just get the Warriors out of there. But truth be told, the way it's looking so far, the Kings are looking very, very dominant over the Golden State Warriors. Now, first things first, with this game yesterday, if you watched it, if you didn't watch it, you see what I'm talking about. The Warriors were extremely sloppy. They had 20 turnovers, but it's not even so much the, the quantity of the turnovers. It was more so the quality of the turnovers. They happened in such crucial stretches of the game, and they were really just shooting themselves in the foot. The Warriors couldn't knock down open jump shots. They gave up easy buckets. It was so many other things that just came into play for the Warriors. But before I even, even dog out the Warriors about the things they could have did better, the things they could have did right, you got to first acknowledge how great the Kings played as a team and how great the Kings have been playing as a team. Damn it, light the beam. <laughs> light the beam. I'm not the one. I'm not the one saying the Kings are the people who are going to win the finals. I was never going for the Kings. Let me set that record straight. I'm not a Kings fan. I'm not really a Warriors fan. I'm a Pistons fan, truth be told. But I I did think the Warriors are going to come in here and give a better fight. Obviously, it's still a lot more series left. Um, But, man, one of the things, too, uh, Draymond, he got ejected. I do think that played a crucial role in, in in the game, especially when you were looking down the stretch of that fourth quarter and what needed to happen. Yes, Draymond has some horrible plays throughout the game, and I'm sure he'll admit that he played very, very bad throughout the game at some points. Uh, But also, you got to realize what Draymond brings to the game. Outside of defense and energy, Draymond is a very good passer. So times where him and Steph is coming off the pick and roll and he may have an open shot and need to be more aggressive, a lot of times he gives it up for an open three or an open layup to anybody. So, you know, those are certain things where you miss Draymond Green down the stretch because he does bring that type of value to the team. So here's another another point, too. 
Now, I know some people are just going to say, I, I can already hear a lot of people saying it right now. Well, if the Warriors played this bad and they only lost by eight points or six points, then, you know, just wait until they have a great game. Then they're really going to show up big. They're going to blow the Kings out by 15. They're going to blow the Kings out by 20. I know somebody right now is listening, is thinking that same exact thing. But let me tell you right now, that's not how it works. <laughs> that, that's not how it works. The Kings are a good basketball team. And as a fan of watching good basketball, the Sacramento Kings provided that itch for me. They played great basketball. They were sloppy at times, too. But ultimately, when they needed to pull it together, they did. They made tough shots. They exploited the Warriors' weaknesses when they gave up easy buckets and they weren't getting to their assignments in time. The Kings stepped up and they played a great game of basketball. So before you start talking trash about, oh, the Warriors should easily be beating this team or when they have a good game, they'll be beating this team, you have to first acknowledge how great of a team the Sacramento Kings are. And if you don't know by now, damn it, you should know. You should definitely know by now. So I, I don't know. That's that's my thing with the Kings. I'm hoping the Warriors actually bounce back when they go home in Golden State. I hope, I hope they actually show up big and, and can win a game, make this an interesting series because it would it would be tragic for the for the champs to uh go down in, in five games or four games or it, it would be pretty tragic. I, I'm just saying. Somebody told me that actually. We're about to get to the callers because Someone, someone did mention it. They didn't leave a voicemail, but a close friend of mine, he mentioned, he said, I'm telling you right now, Manny, you know, the, uh, the Kings are, are they're going to they're gonna get, get the Warriors the business. <laughs> they're going to take them out in five games. And I, I'm like, I, I can't give you that. I can't give you that. Just because I've seen the Warriors go through this type of adversity and do their thing. But look, we got some voicemails here. We're going to play them really quick. And then we got Clippers, um, News, and the rest of the show, all of that. So let's do it, man. Here's the first voicemail. Let's do it. This is Warriors fan by by chance one on one. I can't deal with Draymond right now. Oh my it's, gosh! It's unnecessary. Yeah, it's unnecessary. Curry needs help. <laughs> De'Aaron Fox is tough for sure, but the Warriors twenty four turnovers, man. I, I mm. just that's not good, bro. Mm. Can't win no games playing like that, and we're forcing people to make shots. We ain't playing defense. Yeah, I, that's nasty, man. <laughs> hey, the anonymous, I love, or Warriors fan 101, bro, by chance, whatever you said, whatever, whatever, man. I know who it is, so it don't matter. But, bro, look, oh, that is a Warriors fan in distress. That is, a, that, that is how a Warriors fan sounds when he is in distress. Despite the championships that they won, that is a Warriors fan in distress. And I understand why. Because they played awful last night. They played pitiful. And and on top of all of that, I didn't even mention, man, obviously the turnovers was, was a huge hitting point for the Warriors that really hurt them and hindered them in a way because you can't win ball games playing that way. You can't win ball games giving up easy buckets and and stomping people out and, and tripping your own players. Like it was just it was it was a sloppy game. It was such a sloppy game from the Warriors. So I completely understand it. I didn't even mention. I, I mentioned this, then we'll go to the other voicemail. Um, but man, Draymond Green stomping my man's out. I'm so, I, some people say it wasn't it wasn't intentional. I think to hell with that, bro. It might not have been intentional. But either way, when you watch the slow motion, that shit looks so bold. <laughs> that shit looks so bold. When you watch the slow motion of Draymond stomping out Sabonis. Bro, that's crazy. Like, I get he held his foot. He was stuck. But Draymond hopped a little, tried to get over him. But he stopped. <laughs> he stomped down. Draymond could have simply just leaned over and fell or something, which can also be dangerous. I understand it. So I get all the aspects of it. But damn, when you look at the slow-mo, he should have been ejected. I'll, I'll put it that way. He should have been ejected. He stomped my mans out. That shit was wrong. That was wrong, bro. You you can't go first. It was it was Draymond kicking people in the nuts. Uh, now you <laughs> when you go back to that OK series C series minute ago, then you got Draymond stomping people in the rib cage. Like damn, bro, chill, chill, <laughs> chill, just a little bit, bro. All right, uh, <laughs> you gotta yeah, look. You gotta watch that video if you ain't seen Draymond stomp some bonus out. Just go watch the video. Is is. Get you a kick of entertainment, honestly. Um, but all right, look, look, look. We got another one. I don't, I don't. This one doesn't really pertain to the Warriors, but it's all good. Let's do it. 
Hello, my name is Vitaly Thomas, and I just <laughs> want to make a statement here. Um, Hold on. We all know uh, <laughs> blue Sockies is better than red Sockies. Jordan, Michael Jordan is literally better than LeBron James, and we all know Kobe. And we all know Kobe is the GOAT. Hey, man. Hey. And, um... Yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Hey man, you know what? Hey, give it up for you, Octavia. I, I, I tell you, I mean, hey man, you you was spitting, bro. Hey, I, hey, you was spitting, bro. I, I give you that, man. This is this. Hey man, you gotta embrace this. Embrace these type of calls. This is a community. All right, all right. So, I heard a great thing that you mentioned there. You said LeBron is better than Jordan. I'll take it. You said Kobe is better than both. I will take it because I'm a huge Kobe fan. I, I'm accepting that argument, man. I like it. Even though we don't, we don't really like doing all the Jordan, LeBron, Kobe shit, but you, my, let me watch my mouth. You're a younger guy. You're a younger guy. You're a younger guy. But, um, you know, hey, hey, you know, I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you for getting your take off, bro. That's that's how it's supposed to be. All right, look, man, we got some news for the run um, coming up in a second. But before we do all of that, uh, Clippers and the Suns, really, really, really briefly, just want to touch on the Clippers and the Suns because this was a matchup here. A lot of people were anticipating. I talked about it just a very a little bit um, a last episode or so. And I mentioned I'm going to ride with the Phoenix Suns just because the Clippers have let me down continuously year after year and every time they go into the playoffs. Now, really quick, because I'm not going to stay on this. They play game two tonight, actually. And the Clippers, they have a 1-0 lead in this series. They won game 1, 115 to 110. But just to give credit to Russell Westbrook, I want to throw him in a highlight just, just, just for a second, bro. Because Russell Westbrook caught so much hell over this past year playing with the Lakers. And even before this year, last year, he caught so much hell playing with the Lakers. People were calling him West Brick. People were dogging him out, saying he's invaluable to a team. He's not valuable to a team. He might as well go overseas. He can't play the game anymore. Like, he's just not there. People were giving him so much hell. But I just want to say, man, even though he was broke as hell from the offensive field, he was shooting terrible, he proved of why you can still be valuable to your team, even if you're not helping them on the offensive he showed that you can do more to the game and impact a game other than scoring the ball. And that is something that also displays great basketball. So, yes, he did not put up a, a, a shit ton of points on the offensive end. He put up a shit ton of shots, but they didn't go in. But ultimately, he played great defense. He got a game-winning stop on Devin Booker, which was huge. He got multiple uh, uh, knock uh, steals from Kevin Durant plucking the ball out of bounds and just stopping the possession right there on Kevin Durant. So you got to give him hell of a credit for that. So you got to applaud Russell Westbrook's for that. Uh, I think this game or this series here between Suns and Clippers, uh, to make it brief, is going to be a back and forth. I, I, I expect uh, Suns to come out and win game two. They had a rough start to game one. Um, but the Clippers were primarily in control most of the game. They made a run. Phoenix Suns, they made a run throughout the game, almost pulled themselves back into it, and they brought themselves back into it to end in a fight. But, I mean, it's hard It's hard to, to, to beat the Clippers and come from behind, man, when Kawhi is hitting like that, when Westbrook is playing good defense, when you got the role players playing good defense, when they're just clicking as a team. So, you know, that's one of the things where I give Clippers their credit. Hopefully they prove me wrong. Hopefully they do. Maybe they actually show up big this year and do something in the playoffs. So that'll be interesting to see. Anyway, look, look, we're going to take a quick break. We got some news coming up for all the injuries that's happened. Giannis Antetokounmpo from the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, uh, John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies. It was a lot of injuries that happened. So we'll touch on those and provide you with some updates. updates and we will be back in just a second. Don't go anywhere. Enjoy these ad breaks really quick. All right, news for the run. Let's get into it. So to start off with some scores of the NBA, just to give a quick recap, the Philadelphia 76ers, they popped the Brooklyn Nets 96 to 84. They now lead the series two to nothing. The Sacramento Kings, they gave the Warriors the business, as I mentioned, winning game two, 114 to 106. And the Kings lead the series two to nothing. Now tonight you have a matchup of full of game twos. The Atlanta Hawks, they are playing the Boston Celtics. The New York Knicks, they will be playing the Cleveland Cavaliers for Game 2, and the Clippers will be playing the Suns in Game 2. More news for the NBA. The Memphis Grizzlies big man, Jaron Jackson, he was named Defensive Player of the Year 
Jaron Jackson, he led the league in blocks with an average of three per game. The Bucs, they are hopeful as Giannis Antetokounmpo's MRI and x-rays have come back clean. Giannis, he suffered a hard fall in game one. He tried to tough it out when he returned back from the locker room. He was just unable to play through the pain. Now, John Morant here, he suffered a tough hand injury the other night in game one against the Lakers. He drove to the basket, went for a big dunk attempt over six foot ten Anthony Davis that ended in a hard fall, which bent his hand in an unusual way. Now, head coach Taylor Jenkins says his x-rays were negative and the team will continue to do further testing, taking this injury one day at a time. All right. Now we got some more playoffs here. Let's do it. Now, first thing, before I even get into more of the playoffs, what's what's up with everybody trying to just jump over people? Like, Giannis' injury, it was tough. It was very, very bad, but it kind of resulted from him just trying to jump over somebody. Obviously, John Morant, he suffered that hand injury trying to jump over Anthony Davis. Like, I I get we're in a, a very athletic league, but you can't just jump over everybody. Damn, like... Some you gotta have some sort of control to that, you know? And, and I feel like that's something LeBron has mastered as athletic as he's always been, is just at mastering that control of being in the air and stuff and being cautious while he's in the air. Cause he's he's had the athleticism to just jump over people, which he's done before. Um, but also too, man, you gotta be cautious with that. I, I don't like that everybody's just trying to jump over people. That's not cool. All right, now the Lakers and the Memphis Grizzlies here. This is the team I want to zone in on for a second because there was a lot of animosity on this. I talked about the Lakers and the Grizzlies for a second a little bit last episode. But more in depth, man, Lakers, they ended up winning game one, which I was fairly shocked about because I said the Grizzlies were actually going to be a tough matchup for them. They play game two pretty soon, but the Lakers won game one, 128 to 112. But his team came alive. Here's why I'm not sold on this. Even though the Lakers won, you got to hear me out because Grizzlies, obviously, good team, as I mentioned. Lakers, play-in team, struggled all season. Have Anthony Davis, have LeBron, some role players around there. The role players on this Los Angeles Lakers team had a fucking dream night game. They had a dream like game. You cannot possibly tell me. I don't care what happens, but show me something down the stretch where it clearly shows the war or the uh, the Lakers having these type of games, game after game, night after night, week after week, consistently throughout a monthly span. That doesn't happen. The Lakers had so many people hitting on all cylinders that I was I was just genuinely impressed. I was shocked. I didn't know what to believe. I almost wanted to resend my thoughts and resend my take, but I, I ain't doing all that. I ain't doing all that here. But I, it really did have me thinking like, damn, it, it, was I missing something with the Lakers all season or, or what was going on with the Lakers? And just to give you a, a little bit of uh, a little bit of information about that game, it was four people on the Lakers that finished with over 20 points with over 20 points. And one of those people were not, or they were Anthony Davis, but still, it was just, it, it was ridiculous. Almost five people because D'Angelo Russell had 19. And these guys are, they're not big names. It's, you can barely even name five actual stars on the Lakers outside of Anthony Davis and, and LeBron James. D'Angelo Russell, obviously, but Roy, not too many people are familiar with him. Uh, uh, Dennis Schroeder, obviously, he's a good player, but he he wasn't even one of the people that put up 20 something points like this team did have me shocked. And I will say the Memphis Grizzlies, as much as they keep talking at some point, you got to back that shit up, man. Pause. (laughs) But at some point you get, you gotta, you gotta talk. You gotta show it with your game. You have to prove that you're not all talk because right now they're talking after losers. They're talking after wins. They're talking game after game. They're talking in the game, before the game, after the game, shut the hell up, bro. Like we, we not trying to hear all that. Just play the game and show us that you're actually uh, somewhat of what you've been saying you are because now you don't have John Morant. John Morant, he probably won't come back because he already had a hand injury. And now at this point, He's he just re-injured it trying to jump over Anthony Davis. So you're missing another star player. And I know I'm on record saying when the, the Grizzlies get John Moran back, it'll be dangerous. To hell with all of that. You still got to play the game. That's At the end of the day, it's only going to be a theory of, oh, well, when this guy comes back, they'll be even better because they play good without him. At the end of the day, it's only going to be a theory. You got to think, when a guy comes back, he's taken away from somebody's touches. He's taking the ball out of somebody's hand. And that's what's going to happen. 
So if Ja is injured for two games and they, the 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 uh, Memphis Grizzlies survive the next two or whatever, not in trouble of getting eliminated right away, and Ja can't come back this series, it's no telling that it's going to just flow perfectly. The Memphis Grizzlies, they're in trouble. They got to do something, and they need to they need to show us because you're going against the best player in the world. And this is why I didn't want to put any money on the Memphis Grizzlies. This is why I didn't want to place any bets on the Memphis Grizzlies. This is why I barely even said the Grizzlies would win this series. I said, look out for the Memphis Grizzlies. Not that they were 100% going to win this series because beating LeBron James, I don't care how bad or how good his team is, it's a tough-ass task. It's a tough task. Many people has failed when they had much better teams than LeBron James. So that's all I'm going to say about the Los Angeles Lakers, man. Um, As far as that goes, the Lakers, shit, I mean, they look great. They look great in round in, in that first game. Completely different team than what we saw in the play-in. So they look great. I'll give them that, 100%. Um, but other than that, man, I have the Milwaukee Bucks. Not going to say too much about this, man. Obviously, they need Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's really that simple. They have a good squad. They have good players on this team. But at the end of the day, man, they are extremely vulnerable to losing to the Miami Heat without Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's that simple. Um, and that's all it is for the Miami Heat If they, if they and the Milwaukee Bucks. If the Milwaukee Bucks get Giannis back easily, I'm going Milwaukee all the way to the finals. I'm ride or die with Milwaukee as long as Giannis is playing. But no Giannis. Bucks are still an okay team, but that make them very, very, like, Equally, equally talented is the Miami Heat when they play without Giannis after the Kumpo. And I'll give you that, man. That's all I got. But anyway, look, I appreciate you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for hanging with me. If you've been riding out through the whole episode, give us a call, man. Share your take on the NBA playoffs. It's here. 219-413-9405. Also, too, I know it's a lot of stuff going on outside of the playoffs right now, but this is the only thing I'm talking about. Um, nobody's fault, but Feel free to throw in some MLB takes. I'm all for it. Throw in some some uh, NHL takes as well. I'm all for it right now. Throw in plenty of takes that's going on, man. So I'm all for it. Uh, also, too, we got a big boxing match coming up uh, with uh, Ryan Garcia and uh, Tank Davis. That's going to be a huge mess up matchup so throw in your takes about that again 219-413-9405 be sure to check out the call topics as well on our instagram at the run podcast you can also check out our call topics on my personal page sometimes i repost them on there facebook is the same as well the run podcast all right man until then we will be back later on next week and so on and so on and so on The Run With Manny Wilson podcast is brought to you by Fifth Investments. Sports betting is cool, but you can really get the most out of your money trading in the stock market. You can make money when stocks go up and you can make money when stocks go down. But all you need is a little guidance. So use the Fifth Investment Stock Trading Journal to help you get started right away. Fifth Investments is a fantastic resource for daily trade ideas, market analysis, news, and information for navigating the stock market. They got you covered with long-term, short-term, options trading, and more. So go to fifthinvestments.com and use the promo code The Run for $20. $20 off of your premier membership or just sign up for free. Trade the stock market and perfect a skill that's going to last you a lifetime. The information is not trading or investment advice. The newsletter is only a personal blog that is being offered publicly for general information purposes only.